What's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how you can hook a bowling ball like me. Let's get started. So you want to hook a bowling ball, right? But you're not sure how to? Well, you came to the right place because I know how to hook a bowling ball. Pretty good, right? Now I'm not gonna say I'm the best at doing this, but I definitely know a thing or two on how to rotate the ball correctly to get the right motion down lane. And today, I'm gonna walk you through on how to get that motion and what it should look like. Now the first thing I'm gonna suggest is get with your local pro shop and have a ball custom fit to your hand so that you can rotate the ball correctly. Now I know this may not be an option for all of you, uh, which is fine, and I'm going to still go over some of the steps that you can use when you grab a house ball at your local bowling center and you'll be able to show up all your friends and know how to hook this bowling ball correctly. So a bowling ball. Let's grab one real quick. Oh well look at that. A Roto Grip Idle Pearl. One of my favorite bowling balls right now and if you don't have one you need to get this ball on your back. Now, me, as you can see, I have one finger tip hole and one conventional grip hole. This is a Sarge Easter grip. Not all of you are going to want this or need this, uh, but the principles are still the same. You're going to want to get a ball that's custom fit to your hand. And so, as you can see here, my finger goes in one knuckle. And this would be for both of your fingers on most balls. And then for you house holders, you're going to want to get this finger all the way in to the second knuckle. I do it a little differently. And I have one finger in to the first knuckle and one finger into the second. And this is the basis for rotating the ball correctly. So first, what you're going to want to do, and you don't need to do this, but this is how most people get their hand in the ball, is they get your finger holes, your fingers in the finger holes first, and then your thumb. Now some people, like Tommy Jones and Dick Allen, put their thumb and then their fingers. This is completely okay and it's a very personal preference thing. So what you're going to want to do also is use these two fingers, not these two fingers, your middle two fingers when you're putting your hand in the ball. Like so. Once we get our hand into this position, it's going to make it really easy for when we throw the ball to get our hand in the correct position to rotate the ball correctly to get the correct motion down lane. Here, I'm going to show you a drill to help you get this feeling in your arm and in your wrist on how to get the hand in the correct position so that we can roll the ball correctly. Take a look. Okay. So this drill, which I will be showing you a demonstration in the next clip, I'm just planted down as if I was finishing, nice and squatted, just swinging the ball back and forth with my wrist in the position that I want. Uh, so then right there at the end, I just release the ball as I normally would, uh, you know, in a full step approach, uh, just without, you know, the error of timing or anything. So here's a great slow motion view of exactly what I'm looking for um, when I'm doing this drill. So you can see right where my wrist is and bang, wrapping around that ball right over the top of it. So that is the motion that you're going to want to see as you roll the ball down the lane. So what I did there is I went up to the foul line and got into my stance on how I would finish. Just like this, nice and squatted down on my plant foot, got my hand in the ball like I just showed you, and then swung it a couple times. Just like that. What that allows me to do is get a very controlled environment and put my hand in the exact position I'd want to without having to take all those steps at a certain speed to the foul line. This is a great drill and something I practice every time I go and hit the lanes for a practice session. And it's something you should do and incorporate into your practice sessions to get your wrist in the correct position. This next drill is great for getting a little more speed into that swing without still taking all these steps and letting timing be an issue. What I do here is take three steps from about where the ball return ends to the foul line and still really focusing on getting my hand and wrist in the correct position up the back of the ball to create the rotation that I'm looking for down lane so that I can get the ball motion through the pins that I like to see. Okay, 
So here I'm doing a three-step approach uh, right in front of where the ball return ends. I just take three steps, get the ball going, uh, so that, again, timing is no longer an issue and I can get around the ball a little harder. So here you can see where that hand needs to be and wrapping around, starting in the bottom third, so uh, the left bottom left quadrant there. Uh, this is how you get the ball to rotate, continue on the lane, and drive through the pins. I also use this uh, in tournaments when the lanes get really burnt and you have to get really far left in front of the ball return. A three-step approach is definitely something you're going to want to have in your arsenal of tools. Lastly, what I do is incorporate both those drills into a full swing so I can get some speed behind the ball and take a look what that should look like in your normal league play or when you're really out there trying to score. So these shots here I really want you to pay attention to. Uh, that you're taking a look at now. This is the ball motion that I'm talking about um, throughout this whole part of this video. You're wanting to see the ball read earlier and make a very controlled reaction to the pocket. Now obviously you need to do, still need to you know, put some axis tilt on the ball, so side rotation to get the ball to carry out the corners. But you want that to be nice and slow. That's a great representation here with an IQ tour. This is the side view. You can really see how that ball turns in the pocket. This is the motion that you're really wanting to see when you're out competing, especially when the shots get tougher. These videos were great in showing you what a one-handed release with a thumb in the ball should look like with the ball motion down late and what that should look like as well. If you're not seeing these results, you may be wanting to take another look at this video, see exactly where I get my wrist in line with the ball on the bottom left quadrant of that ball and getting up the back of it so I can get that nice controlled motion that drives through the pins. Now you may be saying, I don't use my thumb or I'm a two-handed bowler. Well, some of these principles are still going to apply to you and I'm going to show you here. Tom Doherty and Jason Belmonte are great examples of someone who Tom Doherty just uses his fingers and Jason Belmonte uses two hands. These people still get their wrists in the same position that everybody does at the professional level, right at the bottom corner or bottom left corner quadrant of the bowling ball, as you can see that I've shown you in these last few clips. When you're two-handed, you're still going to get into this position and at the end, still rolling up the back of the ball. And then when you're using no fingers, you're still going to really want to try to get as far underneath and behind the ball as you possibly can. Using these pointers are going to impress your friends and get you hooking the ball so you can create the correct entry angle into the pins and you can strike more. Hey guys, I really appreciate you tuning into this video. It was really fun to make and I hope it's going to help you guys out and learning how to hook the ball better. Take a look at my next few videos because there's some great content coming out. Thanks. But when there's no